Welcome back to World History. I'm Mr. McCall. Today what we're going to be talking about is locating and describing eight key physical features of the Indian subcontinent, including major river systems. So what I have over here is a list of the eight different physical features that we're going to be discussing. And we have this map of India that we'll be seeing multiple times. Again, this is the Indian subcontinent because it's divided by a lot of things. There's a lot of rivers. There's a lot of oceans or seas or bays around it. There's also a lot of mountains that separate this from the rest of Asia. Let's get started. So the first one I want to talk about is the Brahmaputra River. And that is right here. All right, the Brahmaputra River runs through the Himalayas along the northern border, it carries rich minerals, and it leaves them in the valley. It also meets with the Ganges River in the plains. So it provides rich soil, great for farming. Next up, let's discuss the Deccan Plateau. All right, as we see on the map here, the Deccan Plateau is a triangle-shaped area that is raised but flat. It's like a mountain with the top cut off. So think of your mountain like this, and then you cut off the top so it's just like this. We've discussed it previously in our vocabulary. Uh, this is generally dry. There's some areas that have some good soil, but it's generally dry. And the reason for that is because the next one, most of the water is left in the Ghats. All right, the Ghats are these long mountain chains along India's coast. It forms a V. So we have the Western Ghats, we have the Eastern Ghats. Uh, the, the Western Ghats are, are generally higher and wetter. All right, so they, they form these higher mountains. And what happens is they end up getting all the, the rain. So all the rain that, that's coming that could go to the Deccan Plateau is actually dropped on the western cat. So it's, it's drier when it gets to the plateau. And then when it gets up here, it loses the rest of it in the eastern gats. Uh, eastern gats aren't as wet, but they do have some hardwood forests, which are great for, for, for lumber. It's a great resource for them. Next up is the Ganges River. Now, the Ganges River is a, a sacred river in India, meaning it has a religious importance. There's a very important set of beliefs about the Ganges River. And we'll discuss that more in later lessons. Uh, it flows through the Himalayas. We said before that it meets up with the Brahmaputra River, right here. And it carries a lot of silt to the plains, and it leaves really rich farmlands. Next up is the Himalayan Mountains. Now, these are the highest mountains in the world. We see them on the map right here it's still growing. The Indian continent is still, subcontinent, excuse me, the Indian subcontinent is still going into Asia. And as it goes into Asia, it forces up the mountain higher and higher. Uh, Himalayas actually means home of the snows. Uh, a lot of the snow, I mean, it, it's covered with snow, and when it melts, that uh, joins the other rivers. Its peak, Mount Everest, I'm sure you've heard of, is five and a half miles high into the sky. It's amazing. Largest in the world. Next up, we're going to discuss the other mountain chain. So we talked about the Himalayas. Now we're going to talk about the Hindu Kush. All right, the Hindu Kush mountains are one of the highest mountain chains in the world. Uh, it's the barrier between the Indus Valley and Afghanistan. Afghanistan is, uh, I'm sure, a uh, a country you've heard of. The uh, United States went to war there, and I, I distinctly remember discussions of the Hindu Kush and the Khyber Pass. Khyber Pass was a narrow route. You see a picture over here. It's a narrow route used for traders in ancient history through modern times and for invaders. Uh, to go through this Khyber Pass takes them between this little valley between really big mountains. Uh, the, the peak of the Hindu Kush is five, nearly five miles high in the sky. So it's not as big as the Himalayas, but it's still one of the world's biggest mountain passes. 
Next up is the Indus River, and this is very important for uh, the beginnings of early civilizations and settlements, uh, early human settlements in, in India. And we find it right here. All right, so just south of the Hindu Kush mountains, we have the Indus River. Now, it actually starts in the Himalayas, and as it travels, it actually picks up more water from the Hindu Kush. Uh, snows melting in the Hindu Kush gather into the Indus River. It empties into the Arabian Sea over here, but it creates some of the world's best farmland in the plains here. And why is that? Well, it carries that sediment, that silt, and then it drops it in that valley, creating really rich farmlands. And the last one we want to discuss is the Thar Desert. This is a massive desert in northeast India. Uh, it's got dry conditions and heat that is often unbearable. Not many humans live here. Uh, dust storms are common. And if you're not familiar with dust storms, think of like a storm except instead of water, it's just pelting you with dust, dirt. All right, so dust storms are common. There's not a lot of plant life as you can see in this picture, uh, but there are a lot of animals. Uh, there's many animals that can thrive in desert conditions, especially since humans are around. Humans have a tendency to kill off a lot of animals and since humans aren't around, animals can thrive. So our goal today was for you to be able to locate and describe eight key physical features of the Indian subcontinent, including the major river systems. So hopefully, if we go back to this first map, looking at each of these, you should be able to pause the vi video right now and identify each of these where you would find them on this map. If you can't, then you probably should go back and watch the video again and see where each of these are. I hope this has been edifying. This has been World History with Mr. McCall. Take care.